Uh, it's good to see everybody. Um, just a few short, quick announcements. Our Thanksgiving offering will be taken today and also next week. So uh, if you have forgotten to bring that today, you can certainly bring it next week and then mark it Thanksgiving offering. Um, and we will send that in to uh, headquarters. Um, our holiday dinner is coming. That is on a date that I just remembered. Is that the 5th? Why don't I write that down sometimes? On the 5th, the 5th of December, all right, two days before Pearl Harbor Day, got it. 20 days before Christmas, 5 o'clock, right? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. 5th at 5? That'll be hard to remember. How am I ever going to remember December 5th at 5? I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, sometimes my rememberer is not the best. But, uh, so if you, uh, if you come to that and you don't see me, please call. Um, I'll be sitting at home thinking, there's something I have to do tomorrow. But anyway, holiday dinner will be uh, on the 5th at 5. Um, that's always a good time. Everybody is making plans to attend. And that's really all of the announcements that I have, I believe. I'll invite uh, the worship team to come up and lead us in worship in song. Brian is gone today, and my voice is not fit for singing, so um, I will invite the worship team to come up and sing. I didn't realize I was supposed to do this until just about uh, 15 minutes ago. Oh, hey. Somebody somebody forgot to tell me. <laughs> we voted earlier. <laughs> okay, let's all stand and praise the Lord this morning.
miraculous miracle. All week, actually, uh, in my head, you get a song in there that just keep going, you know, count your blessings and then in my mind over and over all this week. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I don't know what it means. <laughs> 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 I guess the words up there so you guys can watch out. <laughs> Say blessed be the name. see on the screen behind me uh, a number of prayer requests, and I'm going to be like, oh, I'm going to turn around so I don't forget <laughs> someone. 
Um, Eric Barr is the cousin of the Stafford's son-in-law. Um, Eric was life flighted from Ulysses to uh, Denver, Colorado with COVID. Uh, the situation is very, very dire. Please, um, please be in prayer for him. Um, and I'll turn it around again. Burl Tennyson, um, Keith Howard here in the com uh, community, Janice's brother Earl, uh, please be in prayer for Jose and, and Hilda. They're actually on vacation this week, which is fantastic. I've seen pictures of them in warm places. Uh, as well as uh, Deborah and Gary and uh, Eileen and Chuck. Um, but we came here today to praise the Lord, to, to bring our requests to Him and to praise Him for what He has done and what He promises to do. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Lord, we praise You. We love You. We thank You. Scripture reminds us that, that we love because You first loved us. Scripture reminds us that, that you care about us. You care about the tiny details of our body. You care about our very life. You care about our eternal soul, which is why you have revealed yourself to us throughout human history. So, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for who you are. Lord, for the, the people that were mentioned, uh, the people that uh, are, are struggling with their health, those who need a healing touch, we think of those in our community who uh, are hit taking cancer treatments, and we just ask that you would continue to heal, continue to partner with the doctors, continue to partner with the medical technology, with the treatments and the chemicals for Gary and for Eileen and for Deborah. Lord, for this young man, Eric, we just ask that you would be with him and with his family. Lord, we ask that you would go right now to the hospital room where he is at. If the the machinery and the treatments, the chemicals. Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless the doctors and nurses with knowledge and experience in how to treat his body. Lord, we ask that you would bring your very presence there from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, that you would bring your healing presence. And Lord, for those of us who are stuck watching all of these situations, those of us who are fearful for how things may end up, Lord, we ask that you would give us patience that you would give us trust, that you would give us encouragement and strength, that you would let us know that, that you have not left us. Your word says that you will never leave us or forsake us, that you will not leave us alone, that you will be with us to lead us, to guide us, to teach us. And so, Lord, we just thank you for who you are and for who you are to us. Lord, we ask that you would be with us in the rest of this service, that you would speak to us through music or through your word. Lord, help us this week to live as your people. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to worship and sing.
guess we'll do it without notes. Good morning. This week, um, as, as I've been thinking about Thanksgiving and, and praying about all of the blessings to thank the Lord for, we sang, count your blessings one by one. And it was a short song. If, if you spent that time counting your blessings and you got to the end, you either counted really fast or you don't have a very good memory. Because the blessings we have from the Lord are so many, it is hard to even count, hard to catalog them. You know, um, when we think about the, the presence of the Lord with us at all times in all situations, um, even if we were to catalog all the times when we were able to um, to sense the Lord with us or his, his leadings, we have to also think about the times that we didn't sense it, that we didn't know. Uh, I love the, the illustration about the person that got up to, to go to work and the power was out. So they had to fiddle around with things and finally realized they had no power uh, took a cold shower, uh, struggled to get ready, and it took a long time. And, and realized they were running late for work. <clears throat> Got out to the car and uh, had a flat tire. Had to, had to change the tire and then clean up. Went to go start the car, and the car wouldn't start. And uh, had to get a jump start. And finally got to work. And uh, finally got to the, the workstation and was uh, thinking, you know, that this would be a good time to stop and pause and talk to God. And, I just cried out and said, God, what gives? You know, I get up, um, I'm late, the, the shower isn't what I thought, the car won't work, we had a flat tire, this is terrible. Um, to hear God's reply, well, well, child, I was watching, and if you had been at your normal time, there was an awful auto accident I wanted to save you from. And if you had been just a little bit sooner, um, there was uh, there was some deer crossing the road. I have seen that so many times the last couple of weeks. If I was three seconds faster, that deer and I would have collided. But as it was, I could watch it a quarter mile up the road and think, well, that's really nice. Thanks, God. The time when I forgot my keys inside. <coughs> and then got to see uh, uh, eight deer run across in front of me on the way to school one day. Eight in a row. Um, and they, they were just, I don't know, a couple hundred feet up in front. I think, wow, if I had been smart enough to remember my keys the first time, that deer and I would have been sharing that same spot. And I think, you know, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes that's dumb luck. Sometimes it's God. You know, and you think, uh, how many times has God saved me from something that I didn't even know about? I didn't even sense it. I had no idea what's going on around me. And so in this, in this season of Thanksgiving, as we think about our blessings, not only the ones that we can sense, but the ones that we can't. Uh, this week, uh, with Thanksgiving Day coming uh, this Thursday here in the U.S., um, and our, our traditions of uh, giving thanks or, or whatever you do, whether you have time this week to get together with family or not, or whether you're a turkey or a ham person, or a tacos or egg rolls person, or a pumpkin pie or cherry pie family, or both, uh, whether you're a football person or not, a Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade person or not, you know, a Black Friday shopping person or not, which the most Black Friday shopping is done online now, isn't it? Kind of crazy. I still think they may have mixed up the names between Black Friday and Good Friday, but uh, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but you know, there's there's so many blessings around us. Um, as I was as I was uh, reading the Word and, and praying about a Thanksgiving message this week, the Lord pointed me again to the Psalms. Um, and pointed me to uh, the 103rd chapter of Psalms. If you want to turn there, in your Bible, there in a second. <coughs> Psalm 103, and uh, I'm looking really only at the, the first five verses of Psalm 103. We, we read there that the, the psalmist writes this, Bless the Lord my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord my soul, and do not forget any of his benefits, who pardons all of your guilt, who heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with favor and compassion, who satisfies your ears with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Now, there's a lot there. There's a lot to be thankful there. Um, as, as we think through um, our personal 
uh, place in that scripture. <coughs> Excuse me, there is a lot. Um, and so um, I, I want to kind of break that down and look at it just a, a little bit at a time. Uh, the psalmist writes, you know, bless the Lord, but bless the Lord my soul. All that I have, all that is inside me, the, the inner guiding part, the, the very core of me, the part that I can't wash off my soul, the part that I can't lose um, just by, by uh, everyday life is your, your soul, your, your inner being. And he calls on us to bless the Lord for some very specific reasons. One of them is that he provides benefits. And God is the original friend with benefits, right? Uh, that, uh, that he provides benefits. In fact, um, the, the NIV says, forget not all of his benefits. All of his benefits. You know, we like to think of, of some of the benefits, the, the benefit of coming to the Lord in prayer, the benefit of asking for guidance and leading, the benefit of asking for wisdom, you know, the benefit of calling ourselves um, a child of God. And, and, and ultimately, the benefit of salvation. You know, all of these benefits are things we can be thankful for as we as we give thanks for the blessings we have and the things that we can see and the things we can't, um, we realize that there are so many blessings, so many benefits, so many things that the Lord has given us, we don't have time to talk about them all. We don't even have time to say them or write them or count them all. And I think part of the reason that the psalmist says, bless the Lord my soul, is not just because it is um, the inner part, but also because um, sometimes you can't really dictate what your soul does. Sometimes, um, as hard as we try, sometimes we have to turn that over to God and say, Lord, lead me from the inside. Uh, or, or my prayers, I tend to talk to God really simply and say, Lord, uh, uh, take care of my stupid self. Because I don't know what I'm doing here. And you do. That's in time. God did. And so, um, you know, as we, as we think about all these benefits, there are so many we couldn't even catalog them all. Um, and, and of all the things, the Lord gives them to us to enjoy. 1 Timothy 6, 17 tells us to instruct those who are rich in this present world not to, con not to be conceited or to fix their hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on God who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, little editorial comment here. Um, I, I, I don't see very many Christians enjoying being a follower of Jesus. Now, now uh, that, that's good. Around here, we, we do. We enjoy being followers of Jesus. But um, it seems like sometimes when the world sees our uh, Christians running around, it doesn't look like a whole lot of fun, does it? Now, we concentrate on the things um, that Christians don't do. Well, you know, I don't. Uh, I don't murder people anymore. I just don't. I know, I know, you know. Don't run over people with the car anymore. I know. God says I'm not supposed to lie. I mean, come on, who does that? I guess, you know. And when they look at Christians and they say, wow, you don't look like a whole lot of fun. But we need to remind ourselves that we enjoy the freedom that God gives us, the freedom from a life of slavery to sin, freedom um, to live with him, the enjoyment of having the Lord, the creator of all, with us. What a great friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. That would be a good song, wouldn't it? You know, we see um, uh, verse 3 reminds us of not only our friendship and our, and our riches and things to enjoy, but of the blessings of salvation. Forgiveness for all sin. Wow. Because really, um, if we get down to counting our blessings or writing them down or naming them, if we flip that around and say, well, God, uh, thank you for forgiving my sin. Let me count those. Let's talk about that. Let's catalog these. And, and the word says, no, they're removed. They, they're gone as far as the east is from the west. Let's not talk about that anymore. Let's not write those down and catalog them. Let's not count them. Don't dwell on those thoughts. We've gone past that. 
But, but remember that our salvation is, is probably the best gift ever given to mankind. Ever. Now, in a, in a couple of weeks, Christmas is coming up, and we celebrate that time when the Lord came as his son, Jesus Christ, the second person of the, of the Trinity, and what a gift that was to mankind. It wasn't a gift for God. It certainly wasn't a gift for Jesus. It was a gift for us. And, and when we think about um, uh, the, the uh, NASB, that puts it this way, uh, the Lord who pardons all your guilt, all of it. It means all my guilt, all his guilt, all her guilt, all their guilt, people in the back, people in the front, people across town, all their guilt, the people across the state, across the nation, in fact, even the people across the world that the Lord has offered to forgive all guilt. You get the point. Put it another way, um, the, the psalmist could have simply put, um, uh, the Lord has uh, provided a way to forgive all y'all's guilt. I don't know if you, if you understand that vernacular or not, but all y'all's guilt. It means all of it. <clears throat> and, and that really could be the entire thing right there. Celebrate, give thanks as, as Thanksgiving week and every week. Give thanks for our salvation for forgiving our guilt. Celebrate it. Thank the Lord. Enjoy it. Because that's even, that's even hard for me to understand. I just don't understand how, how the pardon, the covering for guilt has been provided for me. And sometimes I just have to ask God, what were you thinking? Did you know what you were getting into? And he says, yes, I did. And I said, really? Because I don't know if you know me. And the Lord reminds me, yes, I do. <clears throat> Uh, one of my favorite things that's going around uh, some of my pastor friends, um, uh, and I keep seeing it about every other week, and I love it online. It says, uh, when God placed a call on your life, he factored in your stupidity. <laughs> that's encouraging to me. And I think, oh, really? I mean, no. Maybe you did know who I was. Maybe you did actually, as scripture says, knit me together in my mother's womb. Maybe you actually did know me before I was even born. Maybe you actually are aware of who I was. Maybe you do see who you want me to be. Maybe you do see a path going there through Jesus. And I think, you know, that's encouraging. He already factored that in. I don't have to worry about it. That and, and so, you know, because of God's infinite compassion, he keeps mercy for the thousands and forgives all guilt. Now, the flip side of that is that God must punish all sin. He can't, he can't, he can't change who he is. He cannot change his character and his nature. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 puts it this way. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? That's a rhetorical question. That's one of those you're just supposed to think about, and we all know the answer. Kind of like how many times do I have to tell you to pick up your dirty socks off the kitchen table before company comes, you know? Don't answer that. How many times do I have to remind you that Monday is trash day? Don't answer that. The obvious answer is apparently one more. But, but uh, Paul asks, how can this be? How can, how can light and dark coexist and the obvious answer is it can't that's impossible <coughs> that just cannot light can't be part of darkness darkness cannot be part of light God cannot even be in the presence of sin he simply cannot change his character that way he, he doesn't get to bend the rules he doesn't get to try to find a loophole or a gray area that's a human trick, trying to find a loophole or a gray area but the Lord says um, no I am the Lord, you know. Um, we read in Genesis, the first example of that, Genesis chapter three and verse 22, it says, the Lord God said, the man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Well, um, on the surface, that sounds awfully mean, but when you think about it, why? Because God was not wanting to leave 
his favorite creation, the, the one thing he judged very good, humanity, in a state of disobedience and sin and deserving punishment. So God saw the situation and said, wait a minute, we can't have this forever. I'm not going to allow it. And so in an, in an act of mercy, Adam and Eve were removed from the garden. Uh, Genesis says that, that the Lord uh, created a covering for them to cover their, their shame, their nakedness, and then removed them from the possibility that they may inadvertently or purposefully live forever in that state. Thank God he didn't leave me that way. You know, uh, separated from God is not a good place to be. He didn't leave Adam and Eve that way. He didn't leave me that way. He doesn't leave you that way. But he says that, that light and dark cannot be together. We, we see also in the, in the psalm um, that it's mentioned that he heals all diseases. Now, the first thought I have is um, maybe that list of people that's up here on the screen when we prayed, those kinds of diseases, and he does. The Lord is the healer of diseases, the healer of our body. Sometimes his will is not to heal the, the disease of this earth, but to heal the disease of our soul. <coughs> See, we, um, we are born as, as children of Adam and Eve. We are born in that same status that they were, separate from God, loving the darkness, not the light. And the Lord heals that that disease of our soul, that disease of the corruption of our very nature. So, so not just our, our physical ailments, but also the disease of indwelling sin, of, of the sin that is, that is our habit and pattern, our nature, our inherited nature, there, uh, that, that propensity towards sin, not only to commit sin, but also to not do things. James 4.17 tells us this, if anyone knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. A New Living Translation puts it this way, remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Now, sin refers to acts of things, things we do, things we don't do, but I think disease in the psalm also refers to that polluted place inside of us, that, that corruption of our soul <coughs> that, that we were born into. And the psalmist reminds us that the Lord heals even that, or, or as the, the Nazarene Church Manual puts it, it says, all humans are born averse to God, is without spiritual life, inclined to evil, and that continually. Wow, that's harsh. But we can, we can celebrate, we can thank the Lord, we can enjoy our freedom from that. So our, our disease of that, that, that propensity has been healed, a remedy has been provided. Verse four in the psalm tells us that the Lord redeems your life from the pit. That, that place that we are destined, the place of, of punishment, a very real place that we call hell, that we have been saved from, plucked out of, is a reason to celebrate, to thank the Lord, to enjoy um, what we have been saved from. Christians ought to look like the happiest people in the whole world, right? Because we know what we've been saved from. Now, thankfully, we don't have to experience it. Okay, I don't think anybody wants to experience that just to, just to try it out. Give me a little taste of that, Lord God. No way. No way. Save me from that. I don't even want a little bit of it. But it's a reason to thank God for our very future and then on top of that, verse 4 continues that he crowns us with favor and compassion. We're not just saved, okay, plain old regular saved from calamity. But the psalmist uses the language of kings and queens, we are crowned. We read in, the, in scripture about the, the crown of glory that awaits us. It's something to celebrate. We are given the emblem of a king. The emblem of a queen, the emblem of the ruler is given to us. We also read that he satisfies our years, our whole lives with good things. And that's, that's where blessings come in. 
His blessings are not just being saved from something awful, but, but our blessings, as we count them one by one, like we sang, could start with the presence of God, could start with uh, salvation from the pit, could start with, um, as Paul says, the, the peace that goes beyond all um, human understanding that God provides to us. He renews us, he strengthens us, he encourages us along the way. And then there's this imagery of renewing our youth like the eagle. And I had to do a little study on that because I thought, um, is, is he really saying that God's going to turn me into a bird? No. No. Is God really going to turn me into something else that, that hunts mice? Gross. <laughs> One of those things that, that we try to swerve to avoid, to, to avoid hitting them on the road. I guess those aren't eagles, those are other things, but but no. If we think about the imagery of an eagle, an eagle is a strong, superior, apex predator. Everything that, that the eagle is able to fit in its mouth, it can kill it and eat it. Eagles even take on snakes. Well, snakes are an interesting imagery, even going back to, to Genesis. A lot of people are afraid of snakes. I'm a lot of people. <laughs> you realize, um, I, I saw this not long ago, when the eagle fights a snake, the eagle doesn't go to the ground and fight the snake. What does the eagle do? Picks him up. Takes him up where the eagle is superior. It has to pick them up again, brother. But the eagles are that, that apex predator. It soars above all the earthly things. It flies high where we can't even see. We, we look up, and even now, when you look up and you see an eagle flying, you think, wow, that is majestic. And that, that imagery of that, that majestic lifting up above these earthly problems is what the psalmist is talking about. We're, we're renewed, refreshed, and we're remade because we're a new creation. We can celebrate our renewal, our rebirth, our recreation. Um, Paul puts it this way in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone is in Christ, that's us. If anyone is in Christ, at least that's me. Hope that's you too. If anyone is in Christ... This person is a new creation. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. We've been renewed, recreated, fixed, brought back to OEM standard. All new parts. And taken out of all this earthly stuff and the, the trouble and the strife and the sickness and the death and the sin and the hurt and the pain and the struggle. And we're taken up almost as though uh, an eagle has said, Whoop, see you later, and took off majestically flying up above. We, we are up there, and they are down there. We're up here, and everything else is down there. And, and the psalmist reminds us, we can thank God for removing us from all that stuff. We're to fix our focus on heaven. We're to focus on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We're to uh, think about good things. Think about our future in heaven. Think about the blessings, whether you count them or not. Think about the blessings rather than these temporary things here. I've uh, had a great opportunity the, the last uh, year and a half or two to talk to some people um, who have really taught me how to focus on Jesus. Some people I've talked to um, that are facing some really awful, awful situations. And they smile and say, Jesus loves me. This will only be here for a little bit. In fact, um, there, there's a few people who are, um, who, are, who are very, very gravely ill who have told me time and again, this is only temporary. Don't worry about me. And I think that Soaring as though an eagle up above it. That, um, thanking God for the blessings that he gives us. Thanking him for his presence. Thanking him for, for starting with salvation. He didn't just leave us there. Everything after that is a, is a reaction. We can thank him for the gift, the blessings of Jesus Christ, his son. A reason for all seasons. Now, um, in a couple of weeks, we celebrate Christmas. 
the, the, the celebration and reminder of Jesus' birth. Next week starts the first Sunday of Advent. Um, that's the, the time where we uh, spiritually, and physically, and, and mentally um, prepare ourselves to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Um, the, the church next week will be uh, begin to be prepared to celebrate. After service next week, you'll start to see some things that look a little more Christmas-like that remind us of that. Again, we're not here to worship a Christmas tree, right? Not here to worship a pastor either, are you? Thank God for that. We're here to worship the King of Kings. And, and I, it's nice um, when Thanksgiving rolls into Christmas. It's, it's kind of a pain when you see all the advertisements and uh, right after Halloween in the stores, they put up a couple of turkey things and a bunch of Christmas trees and you think, can I not just have one holiday? But biblically, to go from a time of, of thanking God for all the blessings that he gives us does really fit nicely into preparing to celebrate the advent of Jesus. And so um, this week, I just want to remind you, Thanksgiving is not just a day. And it's not just a week. And it's not just a reason to, to get some good deals on about Black Friday shopping or to, to knock over some old ladies and get a cheap sheet. It's not what it's about. If we, if we stop and think and look at our blessings, we realize we cannot count them one by one. We can't even count them 10 by 10. There's not enough paper and, and pens and pencils in the world to write down all the blessings that God has given to humanity and to me. And, and as we think about that, one reaction comes to my mind. Thanks, God. Wow. And I realize how small my words are compared to how big the blessings of God are. I realize how small my, my uh, thanksgiving, my giving of thanks is compared to the gift that was given to me. And I realize that my words are ineffective. Thankfully, the scripture addresses that and says that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groans that cannot be understood by human ears or minds. When we pray, uh, Scripture says we don't even know how to pray as we ought to sometimes. We don't even, we don't even know how to do that, but thankfully we have an intercessor which takes our, our thoughts and our meanings and, and our heart. And I don't know if it's a translation or, or what. I don't know if Scripture doesn't say, but it says um, with wordless groans, with unintelligible to us ways of interpreting my prayer. I can't even hear the way that the Holy Spirit prays for me. So sometimes when I, when I can't even count my blessings or I can't even be aware of them and I realize that, that my prayers aren't even good enough, and yet the Lord says he has provided a way for that as well. Thanks be to God. So this week, it's not just Thanksgiving, but this week we think about the gift of Jesus Christ as we prepare for, for Christmas season and prepare for Advent. I think the message of this psalm is that we can internalize our thanks. Our exterior thanks is, is absolutely appropriate. Our, our thanks with our words, with our actions, with our, our bodies, with our deeds, with our time, our talents, and our treasures. But also that we should call upon our very soul to bless the Lord. Our very soul to bless the Lord for the gifts that he has given us. And so, um, as we go about our week, I want to invite you to thank the Lord for the blessings, whether you see them or not, whether you could uh, count them or not, whether you could uh, draw a picture or not, whether you could describe them or not, we realize that the blessings of God are so far beyond anything I could have. The, the reasons for blessing the Lord are so innumerable that all we can do is call upon our soul to talk to God. Let me pray for you as we leave. Lord, as we come to you in thanks, our words fall so short. 
As we read about the, the promises that you have given us, not only for our present life together with you, it's experiencing this life with you, with the presence of you through your Holy Spirit, but also the, present, the, the promises that you'll be present with us throughout eternity, that you will be, take us to be where you are. Lord, we thank you for that blessing of salvation, that you have removed us from the place of torment, that you have covered all sin, that you have forgiven all guilt, that you have removed it as far as the east is from the west. And just simply because you love us. Lord, help us to love you in spirit and truth. Help us to use not only our voices and our bodies, our abilities, but also to call upon our very soul to thank you. Lord, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. This week, help us to reflect that gift. Help us to bring our presence of the Holy Spirit, our presence of your Holy Spirit in every place we go. Help us to poke holes of light in the darkness. Help us to bring hope to the hopeless, comfort to those who are grieving. Help us to live as your people above these earthly troubles knowing that you renew us so high above it. That's amazing. And Lord, we thank you, we love you, we praise you, we ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us this week. Thanks for coming. Hope you can come back next week as we uh, begin to prepare for a Christmas celebration and then join us for our holiday dinner, of course, on December 5th at 5. Remember, be blessed. <laughs>